All right. So when I started learning the Azure, the most common mistake which I did is to focus on specialized services which are offered from Azure instead of learning the fundamentals of Azure. For example, I directly jumped into the services like Azure Serverless, Kubernetes, Data Lake, Data Factory, and those are the services which are a bit more advanced. So instead of learning those services, I should have focused on the fundamentals of networking, compute, storage, security, and also the cost. So these are the basic pillars which are really necessary for you to get started with your Azure journey. And it doesn't matter, to be honest, if you're preparing for Azure certification or if you're just getting started or just thinking of planning your career in the Azure cloud. So you need to know these basics and without these basics, you won't be able to cover or make yourself expert in the Azure. So today we are going to deep dive into the five common mistakes of Azure, which we should try to avoid as a beginner. The first one, and as I said, focusing on the fundamental. Now you might be wondering that what are the topics we should consider as a Azure fundamental. So here are the list of the topics which I consider to be the basic fundamental for Azure cloud or any other cloud. So for example, the first one is the networking. So in context of Azure, you should be able to understand what the VNet is, what the subnet is, what the CIDR is, how the IP ranges are calculated and how you can segregate your network when you are working with the Azure cloud. So these are the basic thing which you will need because any other services will require a network setup and that network setup you should be able to understand. I'm not saying that you should be an expert, but at least you should have a fair understanding where your resource is going to be deployed in terms of networking. The next item in the list of fundamentals is the compute. So you should be able to understand that how the compute unit works, how you can provision your own virtual machine inside Azure Cloud. Azure Cloud does offer you a, like a predefined AMIs or images which you can consume or either you can create your own like a virtual machine images also for your project need. So compute is going to be another second most important concept or services which you should understand uh, as a part of Azure fundamental. The third item in the fundamental is the storage. So whether you spin up a virtual machine or not, it will require a storage. And also not only the virtual machine, you might need a storage for storing your static content on Azure. So for that purpose, you also need to know like how the storage works in the Azure. So that's the third uh, item, which is very basic and really needs a good understanding when you're trying to store some objects onto the Azure. The next item in the list is the identity and the access management. And for that, you need to understand the Azure Active Directory and the role-based access control and how the roles are assigned to the users so that you know that, hey, these are the users and these users have certain permission associated with it. So by that way, you will know that how many uh, like uh, users exist and how the permissions are distributed in the Azure. So that becomes a really important concept in terms of learning the Azure as well as in terms of learning the security for Azure. The next item in the fundamental list of Azure is the monitoring and the cost management. So if you spin up any kind of a resource on an Azure cloud, then there has to be certain logs associated with that Azure so that you know that how the uh, resource is behaving if there are any issues, then you should be able to address that issue with the law. So that is really helpful for improving your monitoring of those resources. So that's why monitoring concept, uh, understanding the log, how to create a log, how to store the log is really important. And apart from that, also there is one more thing which is cost. So if you are spinning something on Azure, then it is of course going to uh, occur some kind of a cost on you. So you need to know that, hey, how we can optimize the cost because we have a limited amount of money for running any kind of a projects. So you need to fit your resources within that budget so that you have a least amount of a, uh, money spent on running your services and you get a maximum out of uh, those resources when you spin up those resources on an Azure cloud. Also here, I would like to recommend one of the such a platform, which is DataCamp, which I have been using personally to upscale myself with the Azure learning. They have really good courses on Azure if you're just getting started for Azure or if you're trying to get your Azure certification. The one thing I really liked about these courses are they have an interactive exercise associated with these course and also they provide some real time projects which can really help you to improve your Azure learning, which can really essential for your Azure certification as well as for Azure career. 
I'll post the course link into the description section. So please go out and check those courses on DataCamp. Moving forward, the second mistake which I did is to follow the poor security practices while implementing anything on the Azure. Let's expand the security topic a bit. And the first security which you should be aware about is the multi-factor authorization. So if you are using or if you are starting to use the Azure Cloud, then make sure that you have enabled the multi-factor authentication for all of the users so that they provide an extra layer of security when someone is trying to access the Azure Cloud. The next item in the security bucket is the public IPs. I know public IPs are necessary, but uh, when you're working with the cloud, then make sure that you have to create a minimum to minimum public IPs. Because once the public IPs are created, then you are exposing your resources to the external world. And whenever you're exposing the public IPs to the external world, then you, you make sure that you have a required level of security in terms of firewall, uh, attack detection, which can be a DDoS attack. So make sure that you have all of those in things in place to mitigate those attacks and the issues which you foresee in terms of security when you're using the public IP. The next item in the list of uh, security is the network security group from Azure. So with the network security group, you can control the inbound and the outbound traffic coming to your resources. So you should be able to understand what the network security group, how you can use the network security group to control your inbound and outbound traffic. And the network security group is really important because it is used quite widely when you're working with the Azure cloud. So make sure that your concepts are really clear when we are using the network security group in Azure. Also in Azure, we have a security center. So make sure that you you leverage the security center to scan the vulnerabilities, keep an eye on the vulnerabil vulnerabilities which has been detected into the security center and keep an action on removing those vulnerabilities. So those are the good tools which are provided by Azure for scanning the vulnerability and identifying those vulnerability before it becomes an issue. The third mistake which I did is not to leverage the automation when learning the Azure cloud. And when I'm talking about the automation, then I'm talking about the tools which are not directly offered from Azure, but instead those are like available as an open source. And the tools which I'm talking about is the Terraform, Ansible, Bash scripting, Python. So these are the quite a few tools which you need to understand. On top of that, there will be like a CI CD tools, for example, Jenkins, GitHub Action, GitLabs. So those are the few more tools where you can make your automated pipelines, which will deliver your changes into your production environment. For example, like if you are using the Terraform, then you can write the whole infrastructure in the form of code and you can just execute those Terraform scripts and you can provision your resources onto the Azure cloud. And when I was learning the Azure, then instead of learning the Terraform, I just directly jumped onto the UI of Azure portal. And then from Azure portal, I started creating the resources. There is nothing wrong with it, but in future, I will not know what are the steps I have followed from the Azure portal or from the UI to create those resources. And in case I need to do a rollback, I need to provide some upgrade, then I will not be able to do that effectively from the portal. Secondly, there is Ansible also. So with a bash scripting, if you might be familiar, then you can write some kind of a script to automate your work. But Ansible comes a little bit on top of bash scripting, which provides a quite a handy tool to automate quite a lot of your work in terms of patches working with your virtual machine and quite a lot of other things which Ansible can do because Ansible has a quite a lot of plugins and modules which are available for your consumption. So learn the Ansible, try to automate the thing which you are trying to achieve onto the Azure cloud. And not to forget that Python and the bash scripting are still the uh, like a ninja warriors for you because those are the two things which you will need uh, now and then when you are working with the Azure cloud. So bash scripting and Python, just try to master those as well on the go when you are learning the Azure cloud. The fourth mistake which I did while learning the Azure cloud is like overlooking the cost management. When you are a beginner, you get a free credits from Azure. Although those credits are not like a significantly high, but those are decent enough to get yourself started with the Azure. 
But when you get those credit, then you should be able to use those credits effectively so that you can maximize your learning uh, as well as you can practice your Azure. But in reality, when you're working with the actual Azure projects, then there is no credits. You are directly linked uh, all the pricing to your billing account, which can be with your credit card or with the company. And if you don't know like how the resource consumes the cost then you are really in a problem because then you can easily overshoot the budgets of your projects or your company and then it can occur that there are multiple costs and you are getting very high charges from azure onto your invoices so make sure that whenever you are using any new services on azure then what is the best possible way of using that particular service when it comes to money and their costing so just try to have a look onto the Azure documentation, understand their pricing and how we can consume that resources in a best possible way. The other thing which you also need to learn in parallel is to set some alert, some threshold on your project so that you get alerted when certain threshold or limit has been reached in terms of money when you are using the, or consuming the cloud resources on Azure. One of the very basic example of a mini project could be that, hey, you can spin up some virtual machine. That virtual machine can sit into a VNet and that VNet can have a subnet, which can be a public subnet, private subnet, and those subnets can be associated with the route table. And then you can have a network security group uh, for those subnet. And once you set up this whole networking, then your virtual machine can sit inside those subnet. And then you can try to access that virtual machine with the help of load balancer. And everything which I have just explained can be configured and done through uh, Terraform along with the Ansible. So you can just easily thought of and bringing up these kind of a projects will give you a really good hands-on and working with the Azure cloud. I hope these mistakes will help you to understand the Azure cloud and the change your approach on how you're trying to learn the Azure cloud. And also I have published my own playlist where I'm teaching all of these Azure cloud concepts in a much more simplistic way as possible. So just refer to that playlist, which I'll post into the description section. If you're liking this kind of a content, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And there is a membership program, which you can also subscribe to it, where I have post multiple sessions on Azure as well. So those can be really useful if you're just getting started with the Azure.